Hey everybody, Pastor Brendan Witten here. Welcome once again to another Faith Fuel video devotional. This one being uh, particularly distinctive as it's Holy Week and it's another week of prayer and fasting here at Toronto City Church. And so, just want to welcome you if you are tuning in live as this is going uh, premiering on YouTube. Give a shout out in the comments box, let people know that you're here. But also if you're watching on demand, it's great to have you. Great to spend some time diving into the Word together. And so, as I already mentioned, and you know very well, this week is Holy Week. For centuries now, uh, this week Christians have taken time to particularly focus on and remember Jesus. Remember what He's done, celebrate His resurrection, celebrate His ultimate victory, but it is a a very important uh, week, and it really has been for Christians for literally centuries. Uh, you know, historically, they tell us it's the first records of Holy Week being celebrated were in the third or fourth century, and probably it was celebrated before that. So, you know, depending on your tradition of Christianity, there is a, a number of different things that people do, and I, I think there can be real significance and meaning in it all. But obviously, the main ones is we have Palm Sunday, which was just yesterday, and uh, then there's Good Friday. Resurrection Sunday. And uh, for many, there's other things that they will celebrate or focus on through the week. And so we wanted to just, uh, you know, take advantage of this as a church family. And we've been doing these weeks of prayer and fasting, uh, you know, first week of the month. And so it really lined up and coincided for us this year. But then obviously being Holy Week and leading into this weekend for Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday, and even in the midst of all the disruption, in the midst of all the craziness that's been going on in the world around us, uh, you know, just to, to center in, to, to look to Jesus, to consider Him. And so, so uh, what I wanted to do this week is real simple. Every day, we're, we're going to go Monday to Thursday this week, because then we've got our online Good Friday, and uh, I've prepared a teaching for you there. But I, I really just want to take a look every day at a different passage of Scripture that talks about what Jesus did for us. And I want us together to take some time just to, to meditate, to let the Lord speak to us through this. And, and I really invite you, if you're not on board with us already, join us for this week of prayer and fasting. We're just encouraging everyone to pick at least one day to fast. Uh, you know, maybe you want to do a couple more, but pick a day to fast. And we've got prayer calls happening 6 a.m., 7.30 p.m. Um, and, uh, and then tomorrow night we'll be uh, uh, at 7.30 p.m. We'll be more live, uh, we'll live stream worship and prayer. And so you jump on board. And then we're going to have these daily video devotionals just to help us lock in and, and focus what's happening. So, so again, let's look each day at a, a verse that really is going to speak to us about what Jesus did. Because what I want us to do is I want us to really, you know, just take time to really meditate and reflect and consider and, and just receive fresh revelation of just what Jesus did for us. And so today we're going to start in uh, Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. I, I was about to say it's one of my favorite passages, but I say that about a lot of passages. And it's true. They're all my favorite passages. But uh, I've drawn life from this passage for many, many years now. And it says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so close clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. So, uh, actually, I'm pretty sure I hit the last faith fuels I did. We talked on this verse. So, the first part I'm going to kind of touch on, because, you know, we've taught on it in some different levels. I mean, it's good to go back to it over and over again. But, uh, so first we see we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. And uh, this this is a biblical picture. Uh, Hebrews 11, which is right before this, is talking about, they call it the Hall of Faith chapter. It's just talking about men and women who've lived in faith. And, and so then the author of Hebrews gives this picture and says, okay, we've been talking about these men and women who've gone before us, who live by faith, who sacrificed, who've overcome. And they say, so now we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. Now, the cloud of witnesses was a turn of phrase in, the, in, you know, in this time that really picture an Olympic stadium, you know, where they'd have these races or the Colosseum where, and they call because it, it goes so high to the clouds. So they call it cloud of witnesses. So he gives this picture and he says, listen, so now it's like you're running your race. You're, you're there. And all these men and women of faith who've gone before are cheering you on. So he says, this is kind of, kind of sets the stage. He sets the tone. So he says, so let us lay aside every weight and let us lay aside the sin that clings so closely. 
Uh, now, I love the Passion Translation. It says, let us lay aside. It talks about every wound. And there's a, a connotation in the, in the original language that talks about wounds that come from like arrows and arrow wounds. Like, let's remove the arrow wounds. Let's be healed. And so I think that's very appropriate because God's saying to us, okay, get healed from your wounds. Lay aside every weight and also lay aside any sin. Right? Like, I really want to encourage you this week. You know, even today, take some time coming up listening to this and just be quiet before the Lord and ask him to show you, Lord, is there any area in my life that's not pleasing to you right now? Is there any area of sin? Uh, you know, not that we get into a condemnation mindset, but, but we also want to, we want to have hearts of repentance. We want to have hearts that are very soft to the Lord. And it's so easy to start letting, you know, little foxes, you know, song of salt, little foxes that spoil the vine. It's so easy to let little foxes swing in. So, so let's lay aside the weight. Let's lay aside the sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And so we're called to run with endurance. And uh, obviously there's, there's so much I could go down this pathway right now. I, I love talking about perseverance, endurance, steadfastness. But, but watch this because now it goes into verse 2. And it, it gives us clearly, it says, okay, so we need to lay aside every weight. You remember there's a cloud of witnesses. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every sin. Run the race with endurance. But then the author says, now here's how you're going to do it. Looking to Jesus. Right? So, so looking to Jesus. And there's, there's going to be a theme in that this week. A theme in several of these uh, faith fuels. Uh, a theme in that in this coming Good Friday that we would look to him. And we would look to Jesus. Why? Because that's how we're going to do everything else it's talking about here. It's not going to be in our own strength. It's going to be as we look to him, as our eyes are fixed on him, as we're drawing life from him. So we're looking to Jesus. My encouragement this week is look to Jesus. My encouragement this week is in the midst of life, and busyness, and family, and kids if you have kids, and all the stuff that's going on in the world around us, look to Jesus. That's why we're fasting this week. That's why we're praying. We're saying we want to look to Jesus in a fresh and a new way. Let's look to him, right? So he says, look to him, because when we look to him, right, uh, that, that's what empowers us to do everything that's talked about. So often we're trying to do these things, but we're not looking to Jesus. Uh, I remember there's this old song we used to sing, and it, I, I'm not going to sing it, but it said, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let's turn our eyes to him. Let's look to him. Now watch this, because it, it says look to him, but it says look to him particularly in some important context. Right? Again, now the, the, the overall context of the book of Hebrews is the author is writing to the Hebrew church who are going through major challenges and major difficulties. And, and he's encouraging them to keep running with endurance, even though things are hard right now. They're being persecuted for their faith. They're, they're facing a lot of messed up stuff. So he says, you know, kind of get, lay aside the weights, lay aside the sin, run with endurance looking to Jesus. And then he talks about what Jesus did for us. Right? He says, okay, so he's the founder and perfecter of our faith. Gives a little context. And yeah, okay, we know that. And it says, who for the joy that was set before him. You know, it's interesting. Jesus was not joyful about the cross, but he was joyful about what he was going to accomplish through the cross. And I think we miss this a lot of times. A lot of our pictures of Jesus, as we say, very somber, very serious, and, and I'm not saying he was like all happy, happy, joy, joy. Well, he's getting, getting whipped and nailed to the cross. It, uh, but, you know, I'll just say the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I believe that, that he was so intent on the victory. He was so intent. He was so excited about saving you and I. He was so excited about seeing us come into right relationship with God. The joy that was set before him. Right? There was joy in that. And I want to encourage you, this week, I believe the Lord wants to stir up fresh joy. You know what, this year, we started off talking about you know, 21 days of joy, and we talked about the power of joy for this season and for seasons to come. But again, it's looking to Jesus, because it was for the joy that was set before him, right? So, so we see that there was this element of joy. But then we see it says he endured the cross. Guys, let's, just, let's not lose sight this week of how brutal the cross was. Right? Take some time. I mean, we're not going to focus as much here, but take some time. Uh, you know, Rick Renner, for example, Renner.org, he's got some amazing devotions where he literally goes into what Jesus went through. Uh, you know, what Jesus faced. And, and, and take some time to consider that, right? Take some time to meditate on the fact that he endured the cross. 
Take some time to meditate on the fact that he despised the shame. There was great shame in what Jesus went through for us. I don't know if you've ever been in a spot where you felt really ashamed about something. You felt shamed publicly. Uh, I can think of a couple times in my teenage years uh, where I just got, you know, something, yeah, just some stuff. I mean, I'm not going to stories because it's weird, but, you know, you just, you're really embarrassed. You're really publicly shamed by others, right? You know what that feels like? Well, he embraced the ultimate shame, right? So, so it's for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. So let's focus on us. He despised the shame and he took the shame so you and I could be free from shame. And then, but now it, it doesn't stop there, but he is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Notice this is talking about him being in a place of authority, in a place of power, because this is where he was brought to. And so, so we see this. So let's, this week, let's look to Jesus. Let's remember what he endured through the cross. Let's reflect on the shame that he took on so we could be free. But let's also remember that he's now seated at the right hand of the Father, which is a place of power, a place of authority, a place of strength. Let's, let's remember the victory that he won. And I love this last part. It says, and consider him who endured such hostility from sinners, such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Right? It, 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 there's just something that does it. I, I, let me just close. Let me read this from the message paraphrase, because I love how the message says it. It says, do you not see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, right? Hebrews 11. It means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual spat. No parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished the race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourself flagging your faith, go over that story again. Right this week, let's go over this story again. Item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. I just want to invite you this week, let's go into the story again. Throughout this week, as we're praying, fasting, meditating, let's go there together. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. For this opportunity we have this week to look to Jesus. I pray we have the opportunity we have this week to, to go over that story. To be encouraged. To be challenged. To be convicted. Do this work in each one of us. In Jesus' name. We love you, Lord. And Jesus, we look to you today. We look to you this week. In the name of Jesus. Everyone agree with me said, Amen. All right. Well, we're finished for this morning. Obviously, I really encourage you to jump on for the fast this week and get more information at torontostatechurch.com. Jump into the prayer calls. Make sure, looking forward to this weekend, we've got a virtual online Friday, virtual online Sunday. We're excited just about God moving this week. I'm excited to be there. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed this video, just hit the like and, and share it with someone if it spoke to you. We'd love to get this word out to as many people as possible. God bless you. Love you. See you again tomorrow.